In this clip, I talk about a viewer's question on local Docker network subnets and whether those subnets can conflict with your company's physical subnets outside your local machine. Marty asks, isn't the Docker network segmented from the host slash public network a coworker seems to think that the IP range in our Docker environment might cause a conflict with our normal company network. So that's actually a great question. The answer to the first one is yes, the Docker, well, so by default, right, you're using Docker network drivers and the default one is bridge. If you're using Swarm, the default one is overlay. And of course you can use other network drivers. In fact, if you see me jump into, into here, and I just do a Docker network ls. Oh, my Docker's not running. Oh, and look at that. There's a new version of Docker out. No, I do not want to update that today. So let me give me a minute for Docker to start. But there's a, there's a list of Docker dri network drivers that come out of the box and you choose the default one bridge by just creating a Docker network or not even specifying a network and it'll use bridge. Most of us in production will use other networks like Swarm Overlay or Kubernetes will have its own network drivers. There are other ones like Host and Mac VLAN that you can use as well. You can technically even use None, which will disable networking. But the, the thing here is that if you're talking about the default bridge network, which again is probably not what you're going to use in production. Um, that is a net network segment. So it's its own subnet range and it's running in bridge mode. So that means it's going to NAT itself outside of that private subnet into your company networks. But even though it won't technically conflict with your net physical networks, you can't have the same subnets that are used outside your host. And that is due to just standard TCP IP routing. So if you follow the, the IP protocol routing details, essentially if I'm on, let's say a 10.0.0.0 subnet on my Docker container inside of Docker, and then a 10.0.1 subnet is used somewhere in my corporate network, then my container on my local machine won't know how to route to that network because it thinks that that network is actually already a part of my local subnet, right? So you can't technically have any subnet clashing anywhere in the hopping of containers around. So even though it te technically NATs, it's still gonna probably cause issues. And in fact, with some companies, because the Docker networks out of the box are usually 172 subnets and sometimes companies overlap those subnets, and that causes a problem, which means that companies have to go into their Docker settings, for instance, uh, going up here into preferences, and they would go into the daemon config, and let's see, I'm not sure, I don't think there's a subnet option yet. Let's see. I thought one day I saw one. Oh, so yeah, so this is the default subnet right here. It's a little hard to see maybe on the screen, but it's a 192.168.65 subnet in mine. And you can change that, but you also may need to change other defaults inside the daemon config over here under advanced based on whether you're using swarm overlay or using the default bridge and so on and so forth. So yes, this is possible. And basically, if you're not sure, just test, create containers, see if you can get, maybe try to ping something on your network the first way that usually people tell that this is a problem is they create containers on their machine and then they maybe have a SQL server or something in their data center or in a server closet that they need to get to. So then they try to get from their container to that machine and they can't connect. It'll give them some, depending on you know the application and what you're using, it might give you an error. So try to ping, try to do a trace route, add those utilities into a container and see if you can trace route or ping to that remote IP address because of course, you, if you're not someone who's managing all the subnets in your company, you may not know every subnet used all around the network. Now, another thing is that if you're using cloud, like if you're using AWS subnets, and your company maybe houses part of their infrastructure there, and you have VPNs between you and AWS, 
then you also have to care about the subnets in AWS and whether those will clash as well. So basically, Docker subnets, even though they're natted, aren't going to help you solve problems for getting packets out uh, any more than any other subnet on your network. Basically, you can't use the, you should not and probably can't use two subnets the same anywhere in your network, right? Uh, it may it may allow you to get packets in because technically the packets coming in know how to get to your machine because you're natted. But when you try to send packets back out, your machine might, may say, well, hey, I don't need to send these packets out because that particular IP address is in my local subnet, or at least it thinks it is, right? So hope that makes sense. Um, that's just sort of some of the limitations of IP subnetting. And yes, you may have to change that. Hey, thanks for watching. Remember to click subscribe and the notification bell if you want to know when I go live every week to talk about Docker and DevOps and take your questions. I also have other videos over here, or you could just go try to solve that Rubik's Cube you got at a conference last year.